Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our daily get together live here on Facebook every morning, 1030 in the morning, where we get together and examine news and headlines and stories from nearby and from not so nearby as they relate to our life here in Puerto Vallarta as an English speaking community. It is always great to see you. It is always great to get together with people that we know and, and have gotten to know over the past few months. And it is always <clears throat> great to get together with people that are just new to the show. And if that is your case, my name is Paco. And please let us know that you're new to the broadcast by writing the word new in your comment. And um, if you have any specific questions that you want us to address, then please add the letter Q um to your comment um <clears throat> i noticed that you noticed that there's a fly we are we're, we're having flies today oh my goodness oh my goodness let me see if i can make the fly go away oh no oh no shoo poof okay <clears throat> the fly is gone <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> I spent hours looking for the fucking fly. Anyhow, <laughs> I have to say that today is a good day for news because we have news that make us laugh, news that make us think, <laughs> and news that make us look forward <laughs> to, um, to things in the future. <clears throat> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, any, <laughs> oh my God! You love the fly. I was so worried. I didn't want to offend anybody, but you know, don't you hate it when you're in the middle of something and all of a sudden, boom, pa! You know, hate it, hate it, hate it. Anyhow, today we are going to <clears throat> talk about all kinds of fun things. But let me tell you. Can I tell you about my day yesterday? I went shopping. <clears throat> I hadn't been out of the house. See, now my throat is gonna. Okay, throat is cleared. Um, I had to go shopping for groceries. It had been days, and I was just procrastinating because I have all kinds of wonderful things to eat here at home, but the wonderful things started disappearing, and I had to go shopping, and I went to La Comer. Not La Comer, but I went to La Comer, and at La Comer, I was so taken by this sight of a bicycle with a crate with, 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 with makeshift um, <clears throat> panniers, and I felt completely, completely homesick. Well, not homesick, but I missed my, my Boston chapter because this was my life. This was um, what I used to do in Boston. I used to commute every day on my bicycle. Well, certainly not during the snowy days, uh, but I used to commute um, on my bicycle wherever I, I used to go. And uh, hold on, whoops, sorry. Luna, I didn't mean to distract you. Um, I um, used to go on my bicycle everywhere, shopping, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I just felt sad and happy and just, I felt something, you know, when I saw this. And then I went into the supermarket and, you know, I think La Comer wants to kill us because if, if new warning labels on food were Christmas lights, I mean, the whole supermarket was a Christmas tree. It was important. But it was horrible. It's like all these things that, oh, okay, let's face it. I know they're not so good for you, you know? But it's like, look at all those labels. It's horrible. The only thing that I could find in the supermarket that had no funky labeling was this beautiful bottle of red wine. <clears throat> and bottle of red wine came home with me. Anyhow, that's my story of yesterday. You know, I was just out for a few minutes. Uh, to go shopping, then came back and put on my work clothes, which is my T-shirt and my shorts and my jammies, and I just continued um, with my day. And continuing with our day is what we're going to do today. <clears throat> it's great to see all of you. It's great that um, um, that we started the day with a good laugh. Um, <laughs> Logan says, oh, no, she didn't. Yes, she did. <laughs> You know, and I didn't watch it. I didn't watch uh, the, the last night. I really was not, um, you know, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. But it was just nice to 
to, to be able to catch up on the news this morning and see what was going on. Um, um, oh, don't get me. No, let's not even go there. Let's just get started with the news because you guys could get um, could get funny on me. Do they have handicap parking for bicycles? If what you mean by handicap parking, uh, if, you, if you mean like they have like things so that you can lock your bicycle, at La Comer they do. <clears throat> and I suspect, I'm starting to see more and more places in the city where you can lock a bicycle. And this is really wonderful. I mean, if you look closely at this photograph, this uh, this is where, right next to La Comer, you can lock your bicycle if you choose to get there riding one. And today we're going to talk about a new bicycle path. And it's nice to see that more of these bicycle paths are being built in the city. Let's just hope that they will be used and respected and protected as we move forward. Speaking of moving forward, let's dive into the news. Okay, more of an aftermath of the announcements made by Governor, by, by, Governor, <clears throat> by Gobernador Enrique Alfaro um, our government, our city government, City Hall, is saying that there will be immediate shutdown of businesses that are relaxing their sanitary guidelines. No excuses, no nothing. They will shut you down in situ if an inspector walks in and finds out that you are not abiding by the sanitary guidelines that you should be following. Um, this is good. <clears throat> Uh, something else that you should want to, that you may want to know is that, and this may or may not affect us, it's too early for me to tell, but there is a worldwide strike um, by Uber Eats. And uh, what this headline tells us is that it's difficult to know whether Banderas Bay and Puerto Vallarta will join the strike. <clears throat> I suppose this has to do with the fact that even though there's a strike, there are people that need to work. So if you find yourself ordering food for takeout um, through Uber Eats and you are not successful, chances are that it is because the local um, chapter or whatever you want to call it uh, of Uber Eats is joining this worldwide strike. For that matter, if you're feeling hungry and you don't mind a little bit of Pad Thai or other delicious Thai food dishes, Please know that Michael Buford handles his own deliveries using his own waiters. So uh, it is important to know that. Should we go on, well, not we, but should Uber Eats go on strike today and we don't know how long, if anybody knows of other places that deliver food by using their own uh, transportation method and not Uber Eats, um, it might be helpful to others if you can mention them in the comments today. This is something very, very sad <clears throat> that I read yesterday, and I don't know what to do about it, but I just thought I would share it because um, you may want to know that this is happening. As we know, <clears throat> certain businesses have set some strict guidelines for people of a certain age to only be able to shop or to conduct business at certain times of the day. Well, it turns out that Banamex, one of the Mexican banks that we love so much um, here in town, has so many, uh, what they do is they give you your turn by giving you a number and they dispense so few numbers for people of, for elderly people that according to this report by Noticias PB, some people, some elderly people need to get to wait in line at the bank as early as two in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, just to make sure that they're going to be able to conduct their business at the bank once the bank open. There is a statement here by someone who says, we arrived at six o'clock in the morning and, um, and uh, we were not able to get a spot uh, a number to be waited on at the bank. And this is happening in our own city. How sad is this? Um, this news has to do with <clears throat> those um, people that have been against the, our president. As you recall, uh, President Lopez Obrador uh, said to this uh, 
alliance of citizens that are have set ground, set foot, set set shop, set. They have just put their tents on on the Zócalo in Mexico City, and uh, and Andrés Manuel López Obrador, our president, said, well, if um, if you reach a number of one hundred thousand, then I will I will leave office, and uh, just to make sure that this doesn't happen, the people that support the president have decided that they are going to have a one million people march in favor of our president on the 24th of October in Mexico City. Um, I don't know if to think that this is funny. I don't know if to get all frightened at, at that number of people being together and the implications of COVID and whatnot. But this is actually happening later on this month here in Mexico. Well, not here in Mexico City, there in Mexico City. Uh, I also want to let you know that a Mexican Nobel Prize winner has passed. Uh, Mario Molina, a famous chemist who won uh, the Nobel Prize just short of 10 years ago, has died of a stroke at the age of 77. His research work had to do with the chemicals that live in the atmosphere that affect the quality and the size of the ozone layer that protects us from dangerous um, uh, <clears throat> sun rays, the kind that we cannot actually see. Uh, there's a cute little anecdote here where he says um, in an interview that when he was called about having received the Nobel Prize, um, Dr. Molina said, I was not certain of who was calling, but after a little while, I realized that effectively I was being telephoned from Sweden, and I felt truly, truly um, proud of my Latino heritage for being Mexico and for having been able to, along with a community of international scientists, to work on this field, to having won this kind of award, which is truly the most satisfactory thing that there can be. Dr. Molina also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama while he was President of the United States. <clears throat> and speaking of flies on the head, in case you're wondering, um, just a few, um, just after a, a very well-known character from north of the border tweeted that um, that um, this is nothing, uh, that the COVID-19 is just like the flu, well, the scientist community has come out to say, no, 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 Virginia, the coronavirus is not like the flu. So if you would like to be reminded of how the coronavirus is not like the flu, we have this wonderful article courtesy of the New York Times for you to peruse. Let me take a small pause to take a look at um, some of your comments um, and let me get past the fly comments and the, no, really? Oh, I have to look for that video. That's going to be really fun. <laughs> Thank you very much for that tip, Logan. Red wine, healthy choice. Yes, I had two glasses last night and slept like a baby. Absolutely. Um, Steve L. First is already celebrating with an adult beverage of choice. I am almost there. It's only 1045, but I am almost there. Hello from Idaho, Mary. It's great to see you. Um, Johnny's Pizza delivers with their own staff. This is good to know. Um, another uh, chime for them. Uh, Los Muertos Brewery also uses their own staff. This is great to know. And Raymond, who has Artisan Bakery just three blocks away from my house, does its own home delivery. So if Uber Eats prevents you from uh, getting your craving, there are not, there is no shortage of people and businesses that do their own delivery. See, this is so great. This is what I love about, about hanging out with you guys every morning. There's all these wonderful, helpful information. And Jeannie, I... I, I empathize with, I, I, I chime in with what you're saying. This is, this is just horrible. And Paul is right. That parade sounds like a super spreader event. You know, they happen outdoors and we know that outdoors is better than indoors. But when you congregate that many people, 
Uy. And of course, I'm sorry, back to back to deliveries, Robin Spencer at Pig Out Groceries. That is truly, truly a great choice because she'll do the shopping for you. Um, let's see. Thank you for that reminder, Pilar Perez. Yes, Dr. Molina was a huge spokesperson of the importance of wearing a face mask here in Mexico. This is true. Uh, uh, no, Virginia. I'm a, well, I, I read. <laughs> <laughs> I know of these things. I'm a research dude. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, Rita, thank you very much for that. Bonito Kitchen, Basilio, uh, um, Francisco Villa, Sonora House, Tsunami Sushi, and see here in Fluvial, in, in Versailles, in this part of the city. We are well, well uh, covered. And Kate, I forgot to mention this. Yesterday, I was shopping, and this very nice person, this very nice lady says to me, are you Paco? And I was wearing my face mask and nobody was watching. And I, I quickly realized that she had recognized me from coffee and headlines. So I had my face mask on and I went like this. <laughs> so we had fun. It was great to meet you, Kate. I was so glad to meet you and your husband. And every time I have the pleasure of meeting someone that recognizes me from the broadcast, it, it is great to learn from you directly how this is important to you because it makes it even more important to me and I cannot be more grateful for these opportunities. Um, see you tomorrow, Paco. Do we have a date, Jim? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you're heading to Vallarta, I hope that your travels are good and that you enjoy your stay here. Uh, another place with home deliveries. Oh my God, you guys are on a roll today. This is wonderful. But it is time to head to the weather. So let's do that. Boom. <clears throat> ah, see, Carrot Weather is proud because Carrot Weather says, I finally got to show off my remote controlled fly to the world. Why do you know? According to Carrot Weather, it is 27 degrees Celsius, 31 Fahrenheit. I'm sorry, 81 Fahrenheit. It feels like 31 Celsius because humidity is a little high again. It's it's up to 82 degrees. I'm sorry, 82%. I am all over the place today, folks. Slap me. There's a 5% chance of rain. Here we were thinking that we were not going to have any more rain, but that uh, formation that we saw in the Pacific must be moving about. According to the forecast today, we can expect a humid and partly cloudy day. And tomorrow, we can expect the same thing. And on Saturday, the same thing. So it's going to be humid. We may get some rain, after all, from that... Uh, that uh, formation that, that was taking place in the Pacific Ocean. <clears throat> Moving on, I have some more interesting headlines to share with you. Let us start with some headlines that have to do with our destination. I loved seeing this photograph, but it is always nice to be reminded that the pretty, the pretty beach in Puerto Vallarta is not Los Muertos. Los Muertos is fun and practical because you have all the amenities right then and there. But our pretty beach here in the heart of the city is no doubt Conchas Chinas Beach. And it was nice to see a little write-up about it on the newspaper. And, um, and it was nice to see that this was being featured. Um, it is a great beach and you can get to it <clears throat> by simply walking if you want to walk to the beach. The downside of Conchas Chinas Beach, of course, is that if you want to go potty, there is no place to go potty. And uh, <clears throat> and if you are feeling like a michelada or some tacos or whatever, you know, there's nobody there to wait on you. But such is the case in most beaches elsewhere. I mean, it's one of the things that I, we tend to forget here in Puerto Vallarta is that if you go to the beach in the United States, not every beach can cater to you like they cater to you here in our beaches. But... Without a doubt, a walk to Conchas Chinas Beach. And it's easy to get to Conchas Chinas Beach. If you start walking south from Los Muertos Beach, you can really have a wonderful day just exploring all these little formations and so forth and so on. A highly recommended activity. Um, I was also happy to read that the first uh, whales have been sighted here in Puerto Vallarta. Of course, the official whale season will not start for a few months. But apparently somebody 
caught this photograph just a couple of days ago, and the photos are time stamped um, from two days ago. And uh, somebody commented from the local Echoback organization, which is Ecology and Conservation of Wales, that chances are that these particular specimens are headed to South America. So whereas there's a lot of whales that come and spend time in our bay to mate and hang out and get to know each other, um, there are also <clears throat> other species that continue their voyage all the way south. But here they are. Here they are. Um, we were talking about bicycle riding earlier, and here is a report of another bicycle path that has started um, construction. This one is on Avenida Mexico from the, uh, the government offices at the UMA all the way down to Plaza Las Glorias. And in order to show you where that is, I figured, I mean, I'm sorry, Plaza Caracol, I pulled out this Google map, here is Plaza Caracol and Soriana and whatnot and the path. And here is the main avenue. Of course, this would be Medina Asensio. And the new bicycle path heads all the way <clears throat> along Avenida Mexico. <clears throat> excuse me. All the way to the new um, municipal offices that are located over here. So yet another small step for commuting uh, cyclists to be able to get around the city in a uh, um, hopefully safer way. Um, now we move on to things that we can add to our bucket list. It turns out that it, it is possible to visit all the vineyards in Querétaro in a weekend. So for starters, who knew there were vineyards in Querétaro? When we think about wine country in Mexico, we tend to think about Baja California, and we tend to think about Coahuila, which are the two primary states where there is wine. Um, but there are also graveyards in the state of Querétaro. And this article <coughs> talks about the different uh, vineyards that you can visit and gives you an estimation of how much it will cost you to do this. I have actually not taken a close look at the cost but the article breaks it down. It talks about specific hotels where you can stay. And it tells you about what to do if you're driving and what to do if you're not driving. So it's very nicely researched. And apparently there's this kind of um, train-like vehicle that will give you a tour of, of the vineyard. So I am definitely going to add this to my bucket list because Querétaro is easy to get to from Puerto Vallarta. There is an airport um, and or you can drive, you can do different things. So it is nice to know that this is another thing we can add to the things that we would like to do at one point or another. <clears throat> now, this one needs a little bit of explanation. We've been talking about or I've been sharing things that you can enjoy um, online shows and whatnot and how much they cost <clears throat> and i ran into this performance that is going to be done by mexican actress susana alexander and i mentioned this because if by any chance you are spanish fluent or you know somebody that is spanish fluent susana alexander is going to give a performance called a journey through the heart of words or the heart of language. And she's going to recite poetry in Spanish. And I'm sure she's going to be wonderful because I've seen her live and she is an, an amazing performer, an amazing storyteller. And, um, and I did some research and her performance is only going to cost uh 150 pesos which is nothing this one i would definitely definitely watch it's an e-ticket and it's going to be on saturday saturday at six o'clock in the evening and i don't know if people are going to be able to go and see it in person but we will be able to enjoy it um if we watch it uh, through the computer or through the television, and it'll only cost 150 pesos. <clears throat> I see all kinds of comments coming up. So maybe, let's see what's coming up next. 
um, of what's coming up next is TV related things. So let me take a quick stop just to take a look at your comments and see what you guys are thinking. You may not notice this because this is so subtle, but I got new reflector lights for my, my reflectors and the temperature of these light bulbs is so much better on my skin complexion. I'm, I'm very, very happy um, that I made that purchase yesterday at Costco. Um, anyhow, let's see. <clears throat> bum, ba -dim, bum, 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 bum. Um, more. Oh my God. Oh, make sure to look through all these comments when the broadcast is over because there's all these great suggestions on places that deliver. Uh, Sheila chimes in on Conchas Chinas, great place to go. Um, and yes, the margaritas at Lindomar are absolutely wonderful. I noticed that you guys have uh, mentioned Lindomar uh, somewhere um, in your comments. Lindomar is a great place for, well, it, it has been a great place for brunch. I don't know that brunch is a politically correct thing to enjoy these days, but it is a great restaurant to sit down and have a nice meal next to the ocean. It is not uncommon for families, and it's very popular with Mexican families as well, the, the brunch at Lindomar. You go and have brunch, and the restaurant is right next to the beach, so you can always hop down from the restaurant and continue your day um, enjoying the water on the beach. Um, Rip chimes in on the bicycle trails in Vallarta. Yes, there's there's quite a few now. It is a wonderful thing. Uh, Terry chimes in on the name of Lindomar. Absolutely. Denise shares a review on the restaurant. Thank you very much. Um, it is five o'clock somewhere. Well, it is it is wine o'clock as far as I'm concerned. So I may may just get started early <laughs> today. Why not? Oh, and Terry tells us that Linda Mars wheelchair accessible. Thank you very much. How wonderful to have you on board, Terry, because as someone that is not uh, in need of additional support to get places, it is so helpful to have you chime in with these kinds of comments, because I'm sure that there are other people that are thinking about this and um, and I am not, and, and that's horrible. But this is this is very very helpful. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let me see. Boom, ba -dum, bum, bum. Let's move on to three final comments on things that are coming up on television headlines, rather. Um, well, while we were uh, quarantining, Ryan Murphy managed to put together a film version of the Broadway musical The Prom, starring Meryl Streep and James Corden. Um, and this is going to be premiered on Netflix on December 11. I look forward to that. I don't know much about the show, but perhaps our friend Alain has seen it and maybe he will tell us a little bit about it. Then we also find out, oh, this was really funny because Macaulay Cocking, who we know from Home Alone, posted a photo on his, on his uh, Instagram account. Here he is as an adult. If I could only get rid of, oh, there she go. Bye-bye. Here he is Macaulay Cocking wearing a, a, a Scream face mask as an adult. And I love his, his little text. He's saying, Co just staying COVID safe wearing by the flayed skin of my younger self. Don't forget to wear your masks, kids. And that is a wonderful piece of advice. And the last thing that I'm going to leave you with and this is, has absolutely nothing to do with anything, but just in case, just in case that you're feeling like flying away somewhere, and just in case you are a science fiction fan and you've wondered about the size and the, and the, and the interiors of your favorite starships, somebody has come up with this amazing YouTube video that compares the actual size of famous uh, imaginary starships we know and love using the city of New York as a backdrop. So watching this will take 12 minutes of your time. But if you are a science fiction fan or you ever wondered just how large is the Enterprise, I recommend you watch this video. And I'm mentioning it because I mentioned it with, I talked about it with some friends just a few days ago and I have forgotten to post it. Let us bring our trusted friend back for our farewell. There she is. In fact, let's put her gently on my shoulder so that she can match my shirt. 
Uh, your final comments. Let's see. Oh, I had no idea that you used to live in Amsterdam, Michael. See, bicycles are all the uh, uh, bicycles rule in 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 Amsterdam. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Casa Bellavista asks, "Can you cycle to Lindomar from El Centro?" Um, I wouldn't because it's riding your bicycle right along the highway, and it's a little narrow and it's hilly. So I don't think it, it's not something that I would do unless I was a truly, a truly experienced bicycle rider. Does Ryan Murphy ever sleep? Let us keep hoping that he doesn't because his television production is just spectacular. Uh, boom, ba bum 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 uh, Saw the prom on Broadway. Thank you, Rita. Lesbian student band from high school prom is helped by Broadway actors looking for a PR stunt. Oh, that's oh, that looks like a wonderful show to watch. I love it. I love it. This is going to be a lot of fun. Anyhow, this was Coffee and Headlines for today. Um, I hope you had a good time. I hope you feel um, inspired. I hope you uh, some of the news that we shared made you think and some of the things made you laugh. And then uh, some things allowed you to, to have fun things to look forward to. And I think we all need to laugh and have fun things to look forward to. That was it. If you like the show, spread the word. If you really like coffee and headlines, feel free to buy us a coffee. And if not, just don't tell anyone. Just don't tell anyone. But seriously, hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. Have a super day and stay happy, stay calm, stay kind, stay connected, and stay in touch. Have a great day.